I first started out by studying the Ivy League because it is an example of where an athletic conference identity shapes the whole universities and colleges that belong. And I think the same is true, let's say, for the Big Ten. When we say someone is a member at a Big Ten university, although that is athletics, it also connotes a lot of other things. And very much that would be true with the Southeast Conference, of which the University of Kentucky is a member. But it's certainly, I think, one of the big changes in the last 30 years is that increasingly people who analyze higher education acknowledge how important college sports are. What we've tried to do in the United States is going from kind of what we'd call elite higher education of, of less than 5% of your 18 to 20 year olds and to trying to accommodate about 60, maybe 70%. So there's been this real commitment. And the United States has really been the leader. And what we're finding, uh, particularly in the last decade, is that universities in Europe and in Asia uh, and in Latin America have looked to the United States very much as a model. And so they're somewhat belatedly imitating our commitment to expanding higher education access. And it's both very exciting, uh, it's also causes uh, you know, questions and problems of accommodating students, everything from you know, campus facilities to funding. Uh, very different if you're only educating a small percentage of your uh, late adolescents. If you're trying to educate 50 or 60 percent of them, your, your commitment from all kinds of government sources and private funding is greatly, greatly uh, enhanced and, and it's increasingly challenging. What the government found is that they were very, very effective in not only things such as applied physics and chemistry and making weapons, but they were very instrumental in, for example, uh, in uh, giving instruction about new languages, culture, uh, because during the war, it was the first time there was much United States uh, contact with, let's say, Eastern Europe or Asia. And so we had to quickly have all kinds of uh, professionals and personnel be able to uh, be effective in those cultures and countries. And what happened was there was essentially a gratitude that what Congress essentially said is that universities and their faculty did such a good job during World War II, why not continue this partnership and support during the you know, long-term peacetime economy? And, and that is why, for example, today we have at UK, like National Science Foundation, National Institutes of Health, it would be hard to imagine uh, a research university without those kinds of partnerships today. You know, higher education has belatedly become increasingly interested in diversity, but we also uh, grapple with what that means, what does it connote, uh, and it becomes more complex as our diversity becomes more diverse. It's, but even the most selective of colleges and universities, whether it be uh, Harvard or Stanford or Vanderbilt or University of Illinois or Michigan, uh, all admissions offices deal with a range of factors, some emphasizing academic merit, but a range of other. It could be, for example, uh, are your parents alums? Uh, is your family uh, a donor? To the university or a potential donor? Uh, can you run fast? Uh, can you sing well? Uh, as well as can you do well in calculus? So no institution makes admissions decisions only on uh, academic records. It's not by accident that we have uh, a second clarinetist uh, as well as a uh, left halfback. Uh, they don't just happen by accident. They're usually selected uh, in very high stakes uh, admissions game. It makes let's make a deal look like child's play. But by and large our institutions, our, our top institutions remain really the marvel and the envy of the world. And that my own prediction or projection will be that some of the innovations in Europe and in Asia in their universities, they're going to face some problems that are actually very familiar to the United States that we're already dealing with. We may not have dealt with them completely in terms of funding and access, but we're, we're way ahead in at least acknowledging the problem. So I think our, our best institutions still remain uh, uh, highly admired and envied worldwide.